Hi, everyone. Welcome to the MRP Tech Podcast. This is episode 147. My name is Matt, and thanks again for tuning in this week to the podcast. And it seems like over the last few weeks, we have definitely been on a space theme here on the show. And for those of you who have been following along, I have an update for you. Earlier this week, I got an email from the Eris Project, and we have basically gone back to square one. They have provided me with about 20 different contact opportunities for the week of June 4th. So it's looking pretty good at this point that the week of June 4th will be uh, our contact date for the space station here at school. I've had a lot of people individually asking me um, when I when I see them in, in public, asking me about the space station. And uh, it's just been one thing after another. And we're trying extremely hard to, to get this to happen. And it's looking pretty good at this point in time. Now, what we did is we had, um, we have testing on June 3rd. So we're unavailable that day. But June 4th, 5th, 6th, and 7th are all in the clear for uh, most of the day. And they have provided various ground station uh, support uh, times for all over the world, basically, for us during that week. And what they had us do is prioritize which ones we would prefer, which ones we would like to to do, and uh, put them in the order and prioritize it by uh, what our what our availability was. So I did that, and I also basically said that, look, any any available time that is that is on this list, we can make, we'll make it possible. You just give us a confirmed time and date, and we will make it happen. So, so things are looking pretty good for the week of June 4th at this point in time. Now, last week, I talked about uh, some International Space Station facts, and uh, some of the things I had known about Previously, some of them were things that I learned uh, as I researched the show. And I happened to make a comment about future space stations. So that's what I want to talk a little bit about today, what the plans are for future space stations over the next few decades. So first off, uh, we've been talking about the International Space Station a lot, and the International Space Station is probably one of the most expensive man-made objects ever built. I believe the cost was $150 billion over, uh, you know, 20 years, basically. And it's manned by space programs from several different countries. But one of those countries that is not included is China. And China has on its own launched two separate space stations recently. And one of them had failed and they lost control of the space station and it made a big deal back in 2016 when the uh and excuse me if i'm pronouncing this wrong the Tiangong 1 space station burned up in orbit and it was not a controlled uh deorbit so there was also Tiangong 2 which launched in September 2016 and it was basically built to test advanced life support and refueling and resupply capabilities for various cargo missions. Now, China has not spoken really a whole lot publicly about their space program. In fact, much of it is considered secret, and they don't really go out of their way to give a whole lot of details about this. But basically, they lost control of of the first version of this space station, and now the second is in, or was in orbit, up until about June of 2018, when, uh, you know, astronomy fans and and others looking uh, to keep track of this sort of thing realized that the Tiangong 2 had been positioned for deorbiting as well. So, it basically was positioned, and I'm not sure if it has been deorbited at this point or not, but China is claiming that they are aiming to launch the first module of their new space station in about 2020. Before this happens, they have to uh, return to their sort of nominal return to flight of their heavy lift rocket, and it had a failure 
just a, about a year ago. So they're working out those issues. And the new space station is expected to be completed with the addition of two more experimental modules in about 2020. So comparative to, you know, the International Space Station, which was put together over multiple trips, this one is going to be a much smaller space station in very low Earth orbit, just like the, the International Space Station itself. The idea of this Chinese space station would be to have it last for about 10 years and have up to six astronauts stay in it at a time for at least 180 days as it explores how space affects humans, much like the International Space Station does. And so it seems like there are two tracks at this point in time to do research on deep space travel. There are at this point in time concerns expressed by the U.S. and many other countries that may hold some nations back from working with the Chinese on building the station. But again, just like any other political situation, uh, many other countries may feel quite different about that. But here's something to think about when it comes in terms of the current status of space stations. We're now living in a situation where 18-year-olds have never lived a day in their life without someone living in space. That's a pretty big deal. So the International Space Station has been continuously occupied since November of 2000. We mentioned that last week. So students that are seniors in high school this year have never lived a day without someone in space. That's an interesting fact. So there are plans and, and much more elaborate plans for space stations in the future. So we're basically in a, a very beginning stage or infancy of space exploration. And if you look this up, NASA is sort of exploring space through partnerships at this point, and it's a multi-phase process. So we're currently in phase zero, which is solve deep space exploration challenges through research and testing on board the ISS. And from that point, understand if and when resources will be available to move forward from that. So currently we are in phase zero. Phase one would be to conduct missions in what's called cislunar space. So in orbit around the moon. And the plan is to assemble a deep space gateway and deep space transport station in orbit around the moon. Phase two is to take that complete deep space transport system and conduct Mars verification missions. So eventually, moving on to three and four phases, missions to Mars and eventually the surface of Mars. So these space stations will iterate and change and eventually lead towards a presence on Mars over the next few years. So our goal from low Earth orbit to eventually Mars and beyond has years, decades before anything major will happen. Now, the International Space Station is sort of reaching retirement age. Now, it has lasted much longer than expected, but it is expected to be at least turned over to like a civilian presence and sometime in about 2024, later possibly deorbited, just like uh, the previous Russian space station, the Mir space station, way back in the day. So moving on from low Earth orbit, the idea here is that NASA and its partners will build components and transport systems for the first outpost near the moon in the 2020s. It is going to be much smaller than the International Space Station, only a few modules attached to it. 
and it will be able to be docked by the Orion crew vehicle, and I'm sure other vehicles as well. It will have um, a propulsion and power system to help keep it in its orbit. It will have a few airlock modules and basically a, a very small, uh, two very small habitation modules and room for cargo as well. So very, very small compared to the International Space Station. And what NASA really considers this is a home away from home type of scenario and where they would now have been comfortable from their research on the space station. Now we're going to move it a little farther away, do some more testing, but still be close enough, home, close enough to home in case you know something were to happen and they needed to bail out for any particular reason. The biggest challenge for something like this is dealing with trash because if you think about it, space is limited and injecting garbages, garbage and, and everything like that is easy on the space station because it's either put in a cargo container and burned up in reorbit, or excuse me, re-entry, or um, it's, it's sent back to Earth itself and taken care of there. Another challenge right now is the the space launch system that has been on delay for years with the Orion capsule. So, you know, it could turn more into the commercial side of things where something like SpaceX and Dragon would, would be used for this. So in this case, though, once those have been taken care of, it's much more than a research station. It's basically a, a transfer station for things that would happen later on. So, so it's sort of a stepping stone for the future. And as time goes on, when you have things like the SpaceX Starship that is being tested currently, the idea would be these stations are used for basically the only purpose is getting to Mars. And if that is successful, that is going to line up all sorts of different competitions for for space stations itself. So Taking a look once more, we have the International Space Station decommissioned somewhere between 2024 and 2028. We have the Chinese Large Modular Space Station that hopes to be operational by 2022. Uh, NASA's Deep Space Gateway would hopefully be in operation by the 2030s. But with that, there are several companies like Bigelow Aerospace that have inflatable space habitats being developed. In fact, there's currently a module on the International Space Station developed by Bigelow at this point that is inflated and has been working very well. And it's used currently as a storage space on the space station just as they, they research and test the, the dur durability of these, these types of modules. So... There are other companies out there like Axiom, which Axiom is a private company that's plans to launch modules out there and link with the space station, but they want to remain in low Earth orbit and they want to basically generate revenue from space tourism. So once this, the original space station is shut down, they basically will, will launch their own modules and create a revenue stream there for for space tourism there's other ideas like space hotels that offer uh you know luxury suites that will connect to the iss and a lot of this is just ideas at this point in time but i think we're going to see in the future more commercial opportunities and less government-led uh initiatives so think about right now you know private space stations and unfortunately i think you know there will also be military space stations at certain points <laughs> you know if you know not to go down this road but who knows there may are even already be military space stations um but I'm pretty sure that um, those that watch the skies would be able to to track those types of things but you can't uh, disagree that there might be a military initiative in there somewhere 
uh, things like space station vacations. If you had enough uh, funding, at first it would be for the, the, the extremely rich, and then price would be lowered eventually so that um, middle class could even do this. And there's a lot coming down the line over the next 10 to 20 years. So think about it, 20 years from now is 2038. That's not a very long time from now. And with all of these cool initiatives happening, a new space race is coming. And I, I think it's almost impossible to, to, to hold back at this point in time. And much of it's going to be the private space industry. And it's an exciting time to live, an exciting time to see all this. And going back to the International Space Station, which has been the forefront of this for two decades now. I mean, to just have the one space station in, you know, orbiting Earth every 90 minutes is a technological marvel. And a lot of people out there don't understand the purpose of all of this. The research that's done on these space stations has benefited everyone on earth. And I've had many conversations trying to explain to, to quite a few people why this is important and, you know, whether or not you wear glasses or you've taken an, you've had to go to the hospital and have an MRI. Uh, the list goes on and on and on about all the technologies that have come from the research here. So it's a pretty neat thing. So over the next few weeks, what I'm going to do is I'm going to step away from the space station uh, sort of theme going on here. And uh, I will let you know as time gets closer, the confirmed date and time for our contact. We are still looking forward to it. And I'm probably going to have a couple more um, different themes over the next few weeks as we get really busy here at school. There's a, there's, we have school concerts coming up. We also have um, some days off in here in between. And I've got a few projects that I'm working on that I want to talk to you all about. And if you haven't yet, check out our Discord chat room. Uh, go to mrptechreviews.com. Check out the Discord room there. And uh, it's, a, it's a great community of people, um, all who are welcome to express their opinions on what they like, what they dislike. And everybody seems to get along really well. And that's the type of environment that, that we want uh, there. So we're really excited about having that opportunity. Uh, on that chat room, we have uh, like a tech chalk area. We've got an amateur radio area where people can talk about amateur radio. We have just a general discussion area where anybody can post anything. And it's pretty well organized. There's an audio books section that I'm excited to talk about audiobooks. Anybody else who wants to talk about audiobooks or podcasts or whatever can join in that. It's all in the same area and very, very easy to use. It's free and at no cost to you. Uh, if you'd like to support this show, go to mrptechreviews.com. There is a donate button there. And I don't normally promote the, uh, you know, supporting the show. I don't usually talk about it a whole lot. I, I do it intermittently. I do have a Patreon page, patreon.com slash MRP tech. Um, but if you don't want to do like the monthly donation, you could always hit the donate button on the, on the MRP tech reviews website. And that is really helpful because if I had some, uh, you know, steady revenue coming in from here. I could, I could actually do a lot more things. I could uh, upgrade things on the show and that type of thing. And summers tend to be the craziest time of year for me. And the most support that you could give would be, would be the greatest thing that, that, uh, I would be able to see that people actually out there enjoy the content and want to support the show. And if you don't have funding for supporting the show, what you could do is just go and tell everybody about my show and help me spread the word because, you know, this isn't a show that is meant for, you know, people who are extremely tech savvy. This is meant, this is the type of show that is meant for everyone, whether you're a student, you are uh, just interested in technology topics. And I try to be as well-rounded as I can for all these shows. So tell everybody about it and you could also send me an email any point in time. Contact me, mrptechreviews 
at gmail.com. And I'd love to hear from you. And I try my best to respond to every email and occasionally one slips through the cracks for a little bit. So thanks everybody for listening. We'll see you next time.